Now let's talk about the most common defects in eyes. Because see, most eyes are not perfect. Uh, in fact, defects are very common. Even my eye is defective for that matter. I have a defect called myopia. And uh, myopia is one of the most common defects. So myopia has another name. It's also called nearsightedness. Now, basically what that means is that people with myopia or nearsightedness, they can see things that are close by very clearly, but things that are very far off, it, it appears blurry to them. Okay. And that, in other words, what that means is that their far point, right? It recedes it's not infinity so for a myopic eye the far point is not at infinity it comes closer it's, it, it varies from person to person it sometimes is a few hundred meters sometimes a few thousand meters etc it varies on in, on the degree of the defect cool so let's analyze a myopic eye so let's say i have a myopic eye over here and a normal eye over here and an object right that's at the same distance from both these eyes now as long as the object is close by there are no issues Say if the object is the, at the near point, both these eyes will have the same near point, so it, there won't be any issues. So if you move the object like this, now see, let's say if you concentrate on the top eye, on the myopic eye, the object once it reaches, you know, the far point, or rather till it reaches the far point, there'll be no issues. The image will always be formed at the retina. But once the object goes beyond the far point, the image, the image will no longer be formed on the retina. Because at that point is the maximum focal length that this crystalline lens can have, right? So the focal length of this lens cannot increase any further. So even if the object moves further away, the focal length will still remain the same. And finally, the, therefore, the image will end up being formed in front of the retina. Okay? So the further and further the object moves, the more in front of the retina the image will be formed. So that's why the objects, when, when a myopic eye is focusing on objects beyond beyond the far point, it appears blurry because the image is formed in front of the retina. Now, in, in comparison, if you look at the normal eye, so the object, uh, irrespective of how far it is, as you keep moving it further and further away, the image will still be formed on the retina because, as I said, it, because the far point for a normal eye is infinity. So even at infinity, when the rays are completely parallel, even at that point, the image will be formed on the retina. Now, why does this occur? Now, there are multiple reasons, but the most common reason is one, the eyeball is just too big. So, it's so big that even at the most relaxed portion of the ciliary muscle, the focal length is still shorter than the diameter of the eyeball. So, therefore, the image is not formed on, on the retina. And the other reason is that there might be some issue with the ciliary muscles themselves. There is at the, again, at the most relaxed portion, the focal length would be shorter than the diameter of the eyeball and therefore the image cannot be formed at the retina. Now, the next obvious question is how do you correct this issue? How do you tackle this issue? So, think about it. So, the issue is that, see, for a myopic eye, there's an object at the far point or there's an object beyond the far point. Right? And this, this eye is not able to focus the image on the retina and the image is being formed in front of the retina. So what you do is you place a diverging lens in front of the eye. Now, it, it can be a concave lens, it, it can be any lens for that matter, as long as it's diverging. So you place a diverging lens there. So in order to make it look like the rays are coming from a point that's closer to the eye. So the, these rays, they'll hit this lens and they get diverged, right? Now, this lens is going to form an image which will be closer to the eye. And that image basically is going to act as the object for the crystal lens, right? So, all you need is a lens that's going to create an image that is within the far point of this eye. And this crystal lens will have no issues focusing those rays on the, onto the retina, right? So, that's it. <laughs> We've done. So, all you need is basically a as I said, a diverging lens. And to calculate the power, what you do is you take the worst case. So assume the object is at infinity, right? So what this crystalline lens needs to do is produce an image that is at the far point of this eye. So if this point is the far point, and let's say the object is at infinity, right? So these rays will hit the, will hit the lens and then they get diverged. They should get diverged in such a way that they look like they're coming from the far point. Or the image of this lens should be at the far point 
and that would basically act as an object for the crystal lens right? and that's it so the corresponding focal length we can calculate using simple lens formula and of course the power we can calculate and that would be the power of the lens required to correct this particular myopic eye so the next most common defect is called hypermetropia or far sightedness so as the name suggests this is exactly the opposite of myopia so a hypermetropic eye can focus on things that are far away very easily without any issues but it cannot focus on objects that are closer right so what this basically means is that the near point of a hypermetropic eye is increased is not 25 cm it in fact is greater it can be say 30 cm it can be 35 cm it can even be 100 cm or more based on the degree of the defect right so the near point basically moves away so let's let's analyze this so let's say we have a hypermetropic eye and a normal eye right and we have an object so if the object is at infinity both these eyes will have no issues to focus the image onto the retina right uh, but let's say i bring the object closer and if you look at the hypermetropic eye so i bring the object till the near point so till the object reaches the near point no issues right the image will be formed on the retina but when the object comes closer right so that point so with the focal length of the crystalline lens when the object is at the near point that is the least focal length that this lens can achieve it cannot compress the lens any further so if i bring the object closer than that particular near point the image will end up being formed behind the retina so therefore a hypermetropic eye will see a blurry image if it tries to focus on an object which is closer than the near point but this issue will not be there for the normal eye because the near point will be at a distance of 25 cm not further away so till it reaches a distance of 25 cm the image will be focused on the retina for a normal eye. therefore the image will be clear till the object reaches a distance of 25 cm now how do we correct this defect so what is the issue the issue is an object that is you know that is close to the eye the image is being formed behind the retina right so what do you need to do so basically the crystalline lens is not able to converge it right so what you do is you place a converging lens right so that is the maximum that this crystalline lens can converge so if you place a converging lens over there in order to converge the rays so the crystalline lens can form the image on the retina simple right it need not be a biconvex lens in fact it can be any converging so another way to look at it is basically so the object is within the near point so you use a converging lens such that that lens forms an image which is beyond the near point of this eye right and that's it so that image basically acts as an object for this crystalline lens and the crystalline lens won't have any issues right because that's beyond the near point so it can focus those rays on or it can focus those rays at the retina so that's it so what would be the power of the lens required so uh, simple you need you assume the worst case let's assume that the object is at 25 cm away from the eye and you have a lens over there and the image formed by this lens should be at a distance or should be should be formed at the near point of this hypermetropic eye right so that's it you have the object distance and if you know the near point of this eye that's it though that would be your image distance right and you you can calculate the focal length using lens formula and you can also calculate the power and that would basically be the power required to correct this hypermetropic eye and hypermetropia occurs mainly because the size of the eyeball is either too small or the ciliary muscles are not able to compress the the compress the crystalline lens beyond the point right so if the eyeball is too small the image will obviously be formed behind the retina right also if the ciliary muscles are just not able to do some issue or not able to compress the crystalline lens beyond a point then again the image will be formed behind the retina and the next defect is presbyopia 
So pest myopia is actually a combination of myopia and hypermetropia. So it happens because your ciliary muscles or the ciliary muscles due to old age become a little weak. So they're not able to, they can't compress that much and they can't expand as well. So what happens because of this is that your near point, it increases. It's not at 25 centimeters. It, it goes beyond 25 centimeters. Your far point also is not infinity. It recedes. So you have, as I said, a combination of myopia and, a, and hypermetropia. And this, this is corrected using both a concave lens and a convex lens, or using both a diverging lens and a converging lens. Uh, sometimes, uh, before they used to use bifocal lenses, which are outdated right now. So in a bifocal lens, you had a diverging lens on top to correct the myopia, and then a converging lens at the bottom to correct the hypermetropia.